Yes, we're all tired of hearing about 2020 and just how bad it was. But for movies, well at least the ones that managed to obtain a release date, it wasn't that bad of a year. But with studios finally starting to figure out how to distribute their latest blockbusters, i.e. Warner Brothers and HBO Max, 2021 is so far shaping up to be an exciting year for moviegoers, or I guess due to lockdowns, movie stayers. Join me today as I take a look at the must-see movies of this year, hopefully for the right reasons. Some you would have heard of, but maybe some you haven't. Now I won't be mentioning release dates here, as obviously most of these movies have already changed release dates multiple times, but all of the following films after their delays have settled on a 2021 release date. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt Rogers, and these are the must-see movies of 2021. Nobody. So we all know that Keanu Reeves is the king of revenge movies in the form of John Wick. But what happens when the writers behind John Wick give a story to a mild-mannered man who instead of being a trained killing machine, is a mild-mannered family man who declines to defend himself due to PTSD? This man played by none other than Bob Odenkirk of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul fame. Obviously it doesn't look like it takes too long for Odenkirk to join in on the action, but I think it's such a great premise and the title of the movie just begs for that cheesy line. Who the fuck are you? Me? I'm nobody. June. Dune is based on the 1965 literary classic of the same name by Frank Herbert, and it looks like fans of the series are finally getting the movie the book deserves, as the 1984 movie was described by critics as a mess and one of the most confusing screenplays of all time. Timothy Chalamet leads an all-star cast including Oscar Isaac, Zendaya, Dave Bautista, Javier Bardem and Jason Momoa. But I'm most excited for who's behind the camera, with director Denis Villeneuve sitting in the director's chair. Villeneuve responsible for some of my favourite movies, such as Blade Runner 2049 and Prisoners, so I have high hopes for what he's going to do with a sci-fi flick. Dune is set in the distant future and follows a number of noble houses, one of which takes ownership over a planet called Arrakis, which is a prime location for what they call the Spice, a drug that extends your lifespan and enhances your mental abilities. For this reason, obviously ownership of this planet is highly sought after, but the Spice isn't the only thing found on this planet. Cruella Cruella takes us back to 1970s London and tells the origin story of one of the scariest villains of our childhoods, Cruella de Vil. Emma Stone has been confirmed as the title role and plays a young fashion designer named Estella Deville, who as we know becomes obsessed with Dalmatian skins, which leads her down the path to become the terrifying Cruella herself. I love a good anti-hero movie, especially if it's an origin story like we got with Joker. I'm really hoping studios start seeing this as a good premise for films, and I hope it becomes a trend. Cruella also stars the fabulous Emma Thompson, who plays a character called the Baroness, who apparently is the main antagonist causing Cruella's transformation. And how I'm assuring myself that this movie will do justice to the character is that Glenn Close, who played the most memorable portrayal of the character, is executive producing, so we know it's in good hands. Free Guy. Ryan Reynolds looks like he's got another film where he does what he does best, plays his hilarious self in a comedy which I would say is one of the best original premises in recent times. Reynolds plays an NPC, a non-playable character, in a video game, who comes to realise that that's what he is, resulting in him attempting to save the world himself. Free Guy is directed by Sean Levy, who has some great comedies under his belt, and with Ryan Reynolds taking centre stage, it's almost guaranteed to be a must-see. Godzilla vs Kong The Japanese kaiju, or giant monster movie cinematic universe, or monsterverse as they're calling it, is finally coming together with the fourth instalment, Godzilla vs Kong. So far Godzilla has had two films in this universe, with Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters. King Kong has had Kong Skull Island, all three movies being really enjoyable and visually stunning as well. The fact that two iconic villains are going head to head is so exciting to me, and as long as the showdown lives up to expectations, I don't even need there to be a captivating story. As long as they don't end up being friends at the end, like most of these types of movies do. I'm looking at you Batman v Superman. Mortal Kombat Speaking of iconic confrontations, most are familiar with the gloriously violent franchise Mortal Kombat, a huge hit in video games but not so much in the film industry, with previous iterations not being very memorable. 
even though they weren't exactly bad movies. Being a huge fan of the video games, I now have hope that we can get the movie Mortal Kombat deserves, as horror legend James Wan, responsible for creating Saw, Insidious and The Conjuring, will be producing and I worship anything that man touches. I'm hoping for some fantastic fight choreography punctuated by over the top gore, as it has been confirmed that the game's fatalities will make their first big screen appearance, and they're slapping an R rating on it to boot. The Untitled Spider-Man Sequel after the extremely dramatic standoff between Disney and Sony for the rights to our favourite web slinger, the third Spider-Man movie is on its way, which is exciting enough in itself. But what's almost too good to be true is that the cast from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy and Mark Webb's amazing Spider-Man films are set to return. Although not all are fully confirmed yet, this could mean that we see Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire all putting on that red suit at once. That's going to be a nostalgia overload from me. The fact that Doctor Strange is confirmed for this movie makes me think that he's going to be opening up the gateway to these parallel universes, resulting in an Avengers-style team made up all of Spider-Men. Or who knows, maybe they'll all fight each other. Who's to say? Pinocchio. Something we haven't seen in a long time is a good old-fashioned stop-motion film, like those from Tim Burton. But this year we'll be getting one from Guillermo del Toro for the classic fairy tale, Pinocchio. This film is described to be a dark, twisted retelling of the famous story we all know, about a wooden puppet who comes to life and attempts to become a real boy. But the twist is here, he turns out to not be such a nice boy, and is instead chaotic and mean. Something I can't wait to see. Pinocchio stars the voices of Gregory Mann in the title role, Ewan McGregor, Tilda Swinton, Kate Blanchett and Finn Wolfhard. So this star-studded cast is really going to bring these stop-motion characters to life. The Batman I've spoken about this movie previously in my video on Robert Pattinson, so check that out if you haven't already. The Batman is yet another reboot for The Dark Knight, but I don't think anyone's mad about this one. It looks like we're skipping over the origin story this time around, thank god, as we've seen that way too many times. This time we're jumping into the story when Batman is in his second year of fighting crime, and follows Bruce Wayne investigating the corruption of Gotham City, and how his own family may have been involved. This makes me think that we're going to see more of the detective side of Batman, which has rarely been shown on the big screen. But what's most exciting to me is we're getting Paul Dano playing one of the most underrated Batman villains, the Riddler. The Riddler has done some dark stuff in the comic books and kind of resembles Jigsaw from the Saw movies in a lot of ways, so hopefully they take full advantage of the character. Pattinson and Dano are joined by Andy Serkis as Alfred and get this, Colin Farrell as the Penguin. I think this movie has potential to turn into a new cinematic universe that DC so desperately deserves. 2021 will be the year for a lot of sequels too, in the form of The Matrix 4, Halloween Kills, The Conjuring 3 and even a new Space Jam, all of which I'm begging to be good. But I'd love to know, what are you most looking forward to this year? What's on your must see list? I'll be down there chatting with you guys in the comments, but be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering your favourite movies and TV shows. If you subscribe during this video then welcome aboard, and if you had a good time hanging out then spank that like button. This is Matt Rogers. And that is all.